Um, we are going live now with Vassos Alexander, who is just finding a good light place to stand Hello. so that we can see his lovely face. So just to let you all know who Vassos is, um, whilst he finds a good place to stand, he um, is the sports reporter on Virgin Radio's breakfast show with Chris Evans. You'll formerly know him last year from BBC Radio 2, the breakfast show there with Chris Evans too, but now they're on Virgin, so um, definitely listen if you can. I've been listening to the show and it's very amusing every morning um, and Vassos is an ultra runner he um, found out about trail running and ultra running a little bit later on in life and he's written two books now don't stop me now and also running up that hill so Vassos joins us tonight thank you so much for coming Vassos it's really um, exciting to have you on the show thanks for giving up your time and Vassos is going to give us some tips about uh, beginner ultra running um, from his wealth of newly acquired information um, so welcome Vassos how are you doing this evening? It's really lovely to see you, Claire. Hello. Hello. Um, and thank you very much for inviting me on. This is all new to me. I mean, Skype for a start. <laughs> I, broadcasting live on YouTube. I feel very old. <laughs> I know. I te Vassos texted me a minute ago and he, he said, are we just calling? Is it a landline? And I was like, no, no, Vassos, it's Skype. And he was like, what's Skype? <laughs> Skype's quite old now, I think. But it's, yeah. It's um it's what I use. I use Skype basically so that I can put everybody um on this Wizzy system that I've got called Ecam Live, which um puts a picture of me on the screen very small and then Vassos on the screen very big. So um I think right. I once talked to Paula Radcliffe on Skype when she was training. Do you remember her last London, her last London marathon? She was gonna race it and then she got a bit injured, so she just jogged it. But yes. she was still training, being Paula. She still went to Kenya and trained. I into, I either chatted to her or interviewed her, I can't remember. I think it was on Skype um, because my computer seemed to think that I had a Skype account. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think that she was in Kenya. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's really useful for overseas chats, definitely, because it's just um, really easy to use and you can get the video up on the screen. Fantastic. Brilliant. So um, let's just go through some beginner ultra running tips first of all, and then we'll get mm -hmm. to what you're actually training for at the moment. We'll just hear a bit about that as well. So um, so first of all, I just wanted to ask you a little bit about how you fit the training in, because of course you've got three kids and you've got a job, which means you have to go to bed very early and get up in the morning on the radio. How do you actually fit it all in? Um. Well, this, I mean, this is the easy one, and, and, and loads of people will know about this. It's just a case of running your commute. Um, we were at Radio 2, and, um, and it was about six and a half, seven miles home, and I would frequently run in as well. Um, and then and we have a dog called Holly, who's over there. And, Hello, um, Holly. <laughs> and, yeah, you've run with Holly, haven't you? Yeah, Holly's um, lovely. And, and she needs to run as well. So if you can run one or two of your commutes plus a run with a dog, then you're doing pretty well. Now we've moved to Virgin, which is London Bridge. It's more like 10 and a half, 11 miles home. Uh, and it's a much nicer run as well, just along the river, along the Thames Park. Um, it's really lovely, vibrant, fantastic areas of London. It's not great for mountain training. I'll be honest, the Thames Park, the, the biggest hill we get is Hammersmith Bridge. But, um, but, you know, 10 miles plus, I don't know, five with a dog in the afternoon. You're only... You know, you're only losing about 10 minutes running home compared to taking a cab or the tube or the train, however you want to get home, or even cycling. So to be honest, you're not losing any time, but you're gaining all the training. That's fantastic. And so so you're running your commute, first of all, and then are you doing anything else as well? Like you mentioned a bit of strength work to me just now. Yeah, that's, again, that's your doing. Um, um, because I'm training for a mountain race. <laughs> and... Um, I mean, I'm going up and down the best hill we've got here in southwest London, which is in Richmond Park. Um, I mean, it's not long. It's pretty steep. I mean, it's pretty good. You can run up and down it in three and a half, four minutes. But if you keep going 20, 30 times, then that's, you know, your legs definitely, definitely feel that. Um, I think my record might not quite be 30. It might be 28. But anyway, um, no, no, 38. Anyway, something along those lines. Um, but, yeah, didn't you tell me to start lifting weights. Doing um, some resistance training. Yeah, so I'm, lift, I'm doing a few weights in a CrossFit gym in London. Um, my daughter also is a big rower, um, 
I mean, she's not a big rower. She's a she's a, a big into rowing, and um, <laughs> she is. Uh, she's eight actually. She's at her sports awards now. I hope she gets one. Touch wood, Emily. Um, yeah. But she's she's taught, she's taught me basically how to strengthen the legs because rowing is all about leg, leg strength, as is mountain running. And so what particular exercises have you been doing? Can you like give us your favourite, say, three or so, so that people can go into their gym and do the same things as you? Well, what I, what I did, there's like a bar, a bar in the gym. What, like um, for beer? So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, a 20 kilogram bar with weights on each side. <laughs> and I, I li- is it, I can't remember what it's called. It's got, it's got a name. Um, you just, you just lift it up. You try and keep the weight on the uh, heels and it's sort of coming up and down near your shins. So you just either just lift it and then you lift it up onto your shoulders as well. So you're doing a kind of like that. Yeah. Um, Oh, I think that might be called powerlifting. And you do like a clean and then a jerk and then you've got it behind you and then you can do squats. You just did, yeah. Yeah. I I haven't got two hands free because I'm holding my phone So, and my coffee cup. Um, (laughs) both vital <laughs> to the proceedings yeah <laughs> yeah well that's great and so do you do any like body weight stuff as well like press ups and sit ups and things like yeah, that I, I do I press ups every other day and pull ups every other day I've got a pull up bar upstairs um so uh yeah just because I, I, I realise that I'm running a lot and you could just easily just ignore the kind of the upper i'm not sure how much good it's doing my running but it's doing my general fitness good and i think crossfit generally there's this thing there's this thing this new thing called crossfit um and one of my fellow presenters on virgin radio sam pinkham he's big into it and he's kind of getting me into it as well i quite liked it the first time i was doing that the thing that you demonstrated the clean and jerk is it called yeah um i just i loved the i loved the the way i ached I, i can't remember the last time i ached like that I mean, there's DOMS after an ultra and a, and a, excuse me, and a particularly fast marathon, but not, not like, you know, not like that, not in places you've forgotten you had places, that sort of, that sort of um, post um, workout ache. So I quite like that. I think I could get big into CrossFit. Yeah, it sounds really fun. And uh, when I was doing my personal training qualification, we did like a whole session on powerlifting. And I was amazed at how much cardio it gives you. Like my heart was pounding just after doing like the clean and jerk and then doing some squats and lunges, holding the big, this big, huge weights on me. And it it was really a really good way of getting a good cardio and strength workout without the impact of running. Because if you're going to be running your commute, like 11, 10 or 11 mile commute, then that's going to be a lot of strain on, on the legs, isn't it? And of course, you had that ankle injury last time so how's how's the ankle injury holding up with all the mileage yeah that stupid ankle is still i mean it's still not 100 percent um but my you know but it's not as bad as my knee that's been injured for five years so my my method in these things is to just ignore it sensible i, I think like it your is. style yeah i think it is yeah you know in the born to run kind of mentality you know, if you wouldn't stop hunting because you were hungry, because you had a hurty knee, you know, your body will just adapt. Um, yeah. My body's 42 now, but it's, you know, it still might have a, a, a bit of adaptation in it. Yeah, definitely. All the best fell runners are in their 40s now, that's for sure. And that leads me quite nicely onto this next question, which is actually from one of my patrons, Guy Greaterex. And, and he wants to know where your drive comes from. Because obviously, if you're in a lot of pain, then keeping going is going to be quite difficult, isn't it? Um, I will answer that if you tell me what your patrons are. Where they are. No, what is a patron? Oh, patron. So patron is basically a way of sponsoring a creator on YouTube or any other sort of creative medium. So I've got these amazing, amazing people. There's 73 of them, and they all give me uh, an amount from either $1 to um, a guy, Greatrex, he's the top patron. Um, I don't know if I should tell you what amount he's on, but they can basically, they should, they can support me anything from um, $1 to $50, and they get a range of different perks, like a wild ginger running buff which looks like I didn't want to do that because I've actually got my pajama bottoms on 
<laughs> don't want to share anyone. Sorry, everyone. Uh, but yeah, they get a wild ginger running buff if they're a ten dollar patron for more than three months. So I've just been sent. I've just packaged up a few today, actually, to send out in the post. So um, that is. Um, cool thing. What they get, and for over six months, um, for a certain level, they'll get an exclusive T-shirt, and um, these are all also available to buy, etc. So yeah, it's just a way to for people because YouTube's free. Like you don't get hardly any money from creating stuff on YouTube, so it's just a way for people who want a bit of extra involvement to support me, and then I can help them out by prioritizing their questions. So that's why Guy got to ask his question to you because well, he's supporting me on Patreon. So it's like quite a nice little way of doing you. it. I'm learning as I'm going. So Skype, now Patreon stuff on YouTube. I, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna know stuff by the end of this. And I what know. was Guy's question again? So what guys, was my drive? Yeah. So where's your drive? Because you know, if you're getting injured and things like that, like you got injured on the dragon's back and you didn't you didn't want to give up, but you kind of had to. They made you, and then now you're going back and you're not going to give up ever. And I just wonder why. Why yeah, don't you just no, have an I easy mean, life? I'm not. I'm not very good at this running lark, but I a love it and b, you know, if I'm good at anything, I do have a quite a strong mind. I mean, I won't. I won't give up. I do have. Would you call it drive? I suppose you would call it drive, but it's only because, um, you know, I, I. I mean, I won't give up no matter what. However injured I was, you I mean, did you see the state of my leg after the dragon's back last time? It was like someone had put it on upside down. It looked terrible. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, it took me a long time to sort of <laughs> walk again after that, and after the Spartathlon. Um, and so, yes, maybe I can push myself a little bit further than kind of normal. I'm always sort of surprised sometimes at how not easily people pull out, but how. Um, but I I wouldn't put it this way. I, I wouldn't pull out for for for, for some reasons that others would. So I suppose you could call that drive. I just, I don't know where it comes from, but I found something that I love, which is running silly distances. And I love testing myself and I love, you know, pushing through it. And I love, um, and I love completing these things. Um, so yeah, maybe, maybe it is drive. Well, you know, well, I'd never thought of it as drive, but maybe that's exactly what it is. Maybe I just have, um, a lot of drive and I have, um, I, I mean, I certainly have, and I've always had, you know, like, um, when I was at school or anything, people could take the mickey out of anything they wanted, but, like, I've never been mentally weak. You know, if I set my mind to something, n not a chance am I giving up. Um, and that's sort of, that's quite a good skill to have when you're, you know, running long distances, very long distances. Definitely. So it doesn't come from like any deep seated kind of, I don't know, you get a lot of people in trail running that they've conquered it like demons in their past, you know, like you get, uh, well, <laughs> you get like drug addicts and things like that, that sort of turn from one thing to running. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's a good thing. Which is a great thing. Yeah. Um, where fantastic. Yours comes from. You know, um, come at it from where you are. I mean, look, everyone's got, um, is that better likewise, by the way? Oh yeah, that's good actually. Yeah. Um, Everyone's got, um, I suddenly realised you could probably see the kitchen, which, um, and if my wife is watching, although she's probably at Emily's Awards, it, just in case she was like, having a sneaky YouTube during Emily's Awards, she'd notice I hadn't tidied up Mary's dinner yet. Um, <laughs> in the doghouse. <laughs> oh, well done, Emily. What award is Emily up for then? Was I it don't know. the rowing she's, one? Um, she's, she's rowing and it's a sporting award. And you don't tend to get invited as a parent unless... You know, it te if you get invited, it tends to mean that there's a reason to go. Oh, cool! Oh, wow! That's amazing. You'll have to let me know what she's what she's got. But you're only allowed to... you're only allowed one parent there. Oh. Otherwise, I'd have I'd have phoned you to try to reschedule this if, if we were both allowed there. Um, but no, because they I don't know the small auditorium, only one parent allowed. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, do we have uh, demons in the, in my past? <sighs> Look, everyone's got everyone's got um, baggage. Um, I, I don't think that it's a particular um, legacy of any kind of issues that I'm ultra running, but I absolutely see and applaud people who do, you know, um, either run away from, you know, past traumas or run, you know, towards whatever they want to run towards. Uh, you know, I... I I think it's great. I think I think it's great that running, and especially ultra running, has has 
you know, so many hats and you can just choose whichever one suits you and run with that. Um, I don't really know what, what, what mine is. I just, I just love it. And I was talking to, um, to Chris about it this morning, to Chris Evans, how, um, you know, in like 28 or 30 hours or however long it took me to, 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 to run from Athens to Sparta in the, in the Spartathlon, you know, not for one second was I bored. You know, I didn't have music in, obviously. Um, I was just doing the same thing for, you know, 30 hours. Sorry. But you're just so completely in the moment. It's like a, a sort of, well, you talk about drugs. It's like a, like a, like a, like mainlining um, mindfulness, really. And maybe that's what I love about it. Yeah. So you're sort of very much running towards something rather than from something, which is really, really mm. interesting. Yeah. 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 Uh, but, I don't know if I'm running towards or from, to be honest. I'm just, I'm running to be running. Does that make, does that make sense? I'm just, I'm just running because I love being in that, just being in that moment. That is a really good answer. That's fantastic. Um, and I just, people are writing loads of things in the chat here because they're watching us live. And uh, I just wanted to read out something from Neil Robinson who says, great books, great reads. Thanks for all the insights. Just starting out on the long distance journey, aiming one day for Spartathlon. Great stuff. You won't regret that. That is a wonderful, wonderful race. Yeah, um, and lots of people, uh, um, the mechanic, he's just saying, uh, just listen to the Vassos running books, bloody fantastic and uh, inspirational on the walk to work. Thank you. That's great, yep. Um, and there is a question from John Gardner as well, he's one of my patrons too, um, and he says his question for you is, um, does ha he have, oh, I didn't read this properly otherwise I wouldn't have read this out, does he have any fun Claire stories to tell us? I thought he just said, does he have any fun stories to tell us? So yeah, he wants <laughs> you to, he wants to, um, uh, well, there was the time when I went down to interview you and you were running so fast and I had the GoPro in front and I had to tell you to slow down. Um, you, you also, um, bless you, you came down um, just when the first book was being published and you came down and hosted an author event um, at Bloomsbury, didn't you? Yeah. And, um, and so there was... And they, they do this, and this is like Bloomsbury, who are like, you know, proper Bloomsbury, for goodness sake, publishers. And they have, once a month, they have the, I can't remember what it's called, the Bloomsbury Institute, I think. And, you know, the one before us was um, uh, some kind of um, um, philosopher on, like, the meaning of life, you know. <laughs> and then they just had, like, you and me up on the stage talking about running. Um, it went really but you'd well, come down, you'd read the book, and you'd made some appalling travesty of a pseudo nutritious cake that i mentioned in the book it was amazing you, everyone loved and it and you produced it and you produced this this mush um from from <laughs> the sort of from the from the slightly messy recipe that i well didn't it, did i write a recipe in the book i'm not sure i did you I just, just said all the ingredients it. but you didn't say any of the like the levels for the ingredients so you'd put like yeah. two eggs and an avocado and <laughs> um, some porridge and some banana and some peanut butter and I just basically had to guess how much of each to put in and mushed it up and made this like kind of tasteless mush that everyone then had to try. Yeah. <laughs> you then went, walked around the room giving it to all these people and it was full wasn't it it was a, it was a full house there was like hundreds of people there and they're all kind of politely eating. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realise that you felt that way about my amazing offering, Vass. <laughs> that was great. That I was wondered great. why you didn't want seconds. That, 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 you know, that just cemented how brilliant you are. <laughs> Backtracking. <laughs> That's really funny. I have forgotten all about that one. That is really amusing me. <laughs> Which brings us really nicely onto the next question, actually, because I want to know about your nutrition. Like, what do you eat in training? Like, do you run these commutes to work and then eat like, breakfast? at work um what do you have for dinner what's your favorite meal and then i want to know what you're planning to take with you on the dragon's back race as well like your go-to foods okay um, um i do eat quite healthily i'm vegetarian um and i, I feel I, I, would, I never was and then i have been for the last year and a half or so and i feel miles better for it um and i wouldn't i mean i didn't become vegetarian because um 
Actually, well, I did. I, I came vegetarian because I just didn't want to have like meat flesh in in, in to ingest it, you know, anymore. And I think that's because I thought I, I think that has something to do with yoga. I think you sort of become more a bit in tune of, with your body when you do yoga and what's going in it. Um, so it wasn't the sort of running reason, but I, I, I certainly don't think my running is any the poorer. It may be the opposite um, for, for, for turning veggie. My absolute go-to food, I'll tell you what, have a look at this, have a look at this. So my, my absolute favourite food, and my son's too, is peanut butter. Mm. But I'm so bad at it that I've given it, can you can you turn this camera around? No, I'll just... Oh, maybe not whilst here. it's already running. My, yeah, I can never do that. And I've had to give it up for Lent because I was—I had like a peanut butter problem. <laughs> I was—I was—I was eating a pot. So, so you do have imagine, an addiction. This is my favourite peanut addiction. butter. And it says, and it says on it. Can you see, oh, Dad? Um, Daddy's Easter peanut butter. Oh. And that's at the back of the cupboard. I'm going to go put it back there before anyone sees it because this is my absolute favourite peanut butter. Just in case. I think you can only get it at Waitrose, just in case they run out. Um, I can't not have that on Easter Sunday. So peanut, I just love peanut butter, but I find myself spooning it out of the jar. And then, <laughs> you know, when you know that like there are 500 peanuts in a jar, that's probably, it's probably over peanut butter. So peanut butter on toast, I love. And it's, you know, it's perfect kind of running fodder, isn't it? Um, I love, I love doing kind of tofu stir fries, nice and spicy. I just had one of those this evening. Um, very occasionally, and sort of, if somebody twists my arm, I might eat some fish, but I, I'd, I'd probably rather not. Um, what else do I like? I love, I love porridge. I love porridge, water porridge. I don't eat too much dairy, and I love eggs. I think I'd go vegan if it wasn't for the fact that, um, that I love eggs. And I have, what I'm, what I'm thinking of doing, because I don't really like um, the way they treat chickens, honestly, um, is getting a couple of, I think they're called recharged batteries. You, oh, can, yeah. um, you can just get a couple of battery hens and put them in your garden. And, and you can see, apparently, their eggs start, the yolks get kind of yellower and yellower and yellower as, they, as the chickens get happier and happier and happier. And, and even in a London garden, you can do that with something called an egg glue. Hmm. So... Um, with some resistance from Caroline and the kids, I'm thinking of getting some 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 of my own hens. But some nice organic eggs. I, I'll I'll always have a an omelette or mushroom and avocado on rye toast. I, I like all that. I love my food. Can you tell? Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. I, that's been a great. It's a literally um, on I'm food there. Peanut butter. <laughs> and I love I love chocolate. I love good dark hundred percent chocolate. Oh yeah. Um, as a treat, we give that up for Lent as a family. I accessorized it with the peanut butter. So we come back with war <laughs> stories, you know, like you've, like Chris, it was Chris's birthday on Monday and he had like some chocolate brownies. And I remembered when the brownie was there that we give up chocolate for Lent. So oh, I, had to, no. oh, I remembered in 10 <gasps> seconds, so it would have been too late. But the brownie's it down, not chocolate, it? it's a cake, it's a cake. No, it has chocolate in it. So anyway, so yeah, no, I do eat quite healthily. Um, I sometimes, um, I sometimes don't eat, oh, hang on. Oh. I'm just getting texts from people who are watching, ah, which is nice. Hello, amazing. Stuart. That's cool. <laughs> Hello, Stuart. Uh, Stuart, who I did the original Mountain Marathon with. Stuart oh, yeah, Stuart. Stuart. I just He's... saw he wrote something on Facebook saying, say hi to Vassar. So hi from Stuart. <laughs> um, I didn't see what his text said. It just sort of came up. But, um, yeah, what was, that? what was I talking about? Um, food. food. Well, I love food. <laughs> food. Um, and, um, you're oh, so get no, sometimes chicken. I won't eat before I run home mm -hmm. and I'll be almost dizzy with hunger when I set off at like 10.30 in the morning having been up since four and not eaten since kind of six o'clock the night before but I sort of think it's quite good for you to occasionally run like fasted isn't it? it's called fasted running it trains you to run off your fat stores which is good in the long run if you're running you know long runs um and actually funnily enough you know for the first mile mile and a half you really just all you can think about is Oh, this is miserable. My stomach is absolutely in desperate need of some food. But then, you know, and then you sort of, it sort of takes, the, like the, the body kind of just takes over. And it's like, okay, fine, we'll just run. And actually you run quite strongly for the last sort of nine and a half miles. Um, and then you get home and then you eat most of the house. Yes. 
<laughs> including all the peanut butter if no one's hidden it at the back of a cupboard. Yeah. Fantastic. So so then what do you take on an actual race with you? Like, um, yeah, let's just basically base it around the dragon's back. What are you going to take with you on the dragon's back race? Absolutely no idea. Well, <laughs> the other thing you know about me is that I'm a bit last minute. I turned up for my first ultra running race having forgotten running shoes. So I basically had to run it in a pair of basically brogues, um, which was the race to the stone, 60 odd miles. I do, I'm did. not a great preparer. Um, I know that before the Dragons back last time when I was still on Twitter, um, I mean, I'm on Twitter, but I, I, I don't actually go on it that much, <laughs> slash ever. Um, I remember seeing pe photos of people who like laid out all of their kit and all of their like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday food. And I, that slightly terrified me because I was like, what? I just, I just take a few like bars and stuff and, and see how we go. And that's more that, you know, I'm much more that like for, for the Spartathlon, I didn't take anything really. I had a couple of Kit Kats, which I didn't eat at the aid stations, but just see what there is. Um, I obviously you do need to eat and you do need to take food during the Dragon's Back because there's no aid stations or anything <laughs> silly like that. And you need, um, there's a drop bag point halfway through the day where you need some food. Um, so I imagine I, well, what I tend to do is I tend to go to um, quite a posh health food shop called Whole Foods, which used to be and could still be on my run home commute and i buy a load of overpriced bars <laughs> like cliff bars you know the peanut butter mm. cliff bars oh, they're good. but they do like a slightly posher version of them um and um and some other stuff around that so just i have different textures different kind of flavors and then i'll try and eat like on the dragon's back i think i remember i tried to eat and food wasn't the issue there, so uh, that I got that right at least once every hour, hour and a half, just something. And I just go into the go into my pack, take out whatever it was, and if my stomach just went, you know, having that, I just go back in and take something else out. Exactly. So just like a lucky dip, then really. A lucky dip of slightly overpriced OT kind of bars. Uh, one, uh, one of them was orange. I can't honestly remember what they're called, but they're all in one place. Yeah. In Whole Foods, and I just go along and I go a few of those, few of those. Oh no, that's ridiculously expensive. I put that one back. <laughs> uh, a few of those, few of those, but like Cliff bars and similar. Yeah. Can I rec make a recommendation to you for a new bar? Yeah. It's a company called Velo Forte, and so they do a lot of cycling products. That's why it's called Velo, um, and they make a really delicious bars, um, and I really, really like them. And I don't usually pay for any nutrition. Hello. I'll just hey Holly. <laughs> I usually <laughs> just get like flapjacks or like you know stuff from the supermarket. I don't tend to pay for expensive race nutrition unless people very kindly send me stuff like um, this active root stuff. They people send me things all the time. So um, Velo Forte um, sent me a few bars and I love them so much that I actually went online and bought some, which is unheard of for me. And they are quite expensive, but they are worth it. And I took them on Cape Breath Ultra with me and I treated myself on like down days with these bars. Um, and yeah. they're just really delicious. And I'll, I can give you a code as well. I, well, everyone can use this code. It's called it's Wild Ginger 20 and you get 20% off. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll email you the code later. Something's happened to my Skype. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I'll take that. Um, and I will try them and I'll let you know how I get on. Something's happened to my Skype, but is it okay with you? Yeah, it sounds it fine. Froze. It all froze. Okay, yeah. fine. And I'm just getting another comment through. So Guy Greaterx is just uh, commenting on your, you saying that you're you just not very organised when it comes to the races. And he, he's saying, like when you forgot your watch charger and it was running out of battery before you started. I think Mary actually took it out of your bag, didn't she, before the... Like, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. Let's let's put it on the four-year-old, shall we? Let's just, let's <laughs> yeah. just put it on the four-year-old. She's asleep Mary. upstairs. She's she can't defend herself. It's totally Mary's fault. Yes. It's Mary's Unbelievable. fault. <laughs> <laughs> I so, should disown her. No, she was a little baby at the time. And she just, she, she, it was at the top of my bag because it was the one thing I didn't want to forget. The charger for my new watch, my posh Garmin. This, in fact, this one, um, which I'll use again. And uh, it's very dark here. Do you want me to turn the light on? Um, um, yeah, if you want to, it's fine. Um, no one's been complaining about the dark. Uh -huh. That's the one. Um, and, um, yeah, so, um, yes, exactly that. Exactly that. I, I turned up at a, at a race where you very much needed um, 
a nav watch. Well, you did if you were me, because my nav is pretty ordinary, um, and I didn't have a, a charger. I, I, I quite like to do it without a Garmin this time around, do it kind of authentically with just me and the map in the mountains. Let's let's assume that that's my plan. I mean, it won't, that won't happen, but let's just assume that I'm going to get my nav good enough between now and May the 19th or whenever it is. I'm saying like whenever it is, like I don't yeah, know. Yeah, like I'll just yeah. turn up in Wales. You know. <laughs> like I'm not I'll, counting the minutes. I'll drive yeah. down <laughs> whenever. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so let's assume that I'll do my own nav and I won't bring a watch. Okay, brilliant. And so Peter Hobley, another patron of mine, he, he says he is also doing the Dragon's Back race. So you'll be able to meet him there. Um, and he says, what's the biggest mistake last year that you made that you are not going to make this year? Um, starting on a badly sprained ankle. Yes. Yeah. That is good. I mean, when I came in at the end of day two, a right old stay, I mean, my, it ha there's this like, there's this thing at the end of day two, watch out for this, Peter, and I look forward to meeting you. Um, you think you're done. You pretty much think you're done. And day two is brutal. It's so wild. The, the, the mountain range, the Rhinox, they're just, honestly, it's extraordinary. It, there's nothing like running. It's just, you know, getting over these wild mountains. There's no one within miles and miles and miles and miles of you. Anyway, you, you finally you sort them out and then you go up and you go down and then you go along a ridge and then over a wall and then back down. And then you, you think you're done, basically. You've been running for 10, 12 hours. And then they just send you on this little kind of extra five-mile loop through a wood, um, <laughs> which I think is Shane and Gary's idea of a very funny joke. And it is, it's good, it's very funny. Um, except that something happens to my ankle during that. And I just, I stopped being able to put like any weight on it at all. And I have, you know, as discussed, I am pretty good. Pain, blah, I, I can just, I can take it. Um, but I just, I just couldn't, I couldn't, I, I literally, I could not move. I think the last, and then the last half mile is gently downhill or quarter mile is gently downhill on a road, on an actual tarmac road, um, it would take me, what, three minutes under any circumstances, maximum. Um, and I think it took me 20. I was, I, was, I was sort of, and then I got in and the medics who were brilliant said, you, you, you're the bloke that started with a badly sprained ankle, aren't you? Well, you know, frankly, <laughs> they, 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 don't, they don't offer you much sympathy. I think she got out a magic wand. <laughs> Yeah, also a joke. got out a magic wand and just said, "There you go, all done." Yeah, what did you expect? So, I guess in in retrospect, if I if I mean, don't get injured, Peter. But if you are, you're not going to do the dragon's back with an injury. You really aren't. I mean, you're probably not going to do it anyway, frankly. But um, you're definitely not if you're injured. Yes, yeah, that's sage advice there, definitely. Um, and so, with that in mind, are you looking forward to it? Guy Greater yeah. wants to know. Yeah? How yeah. much are you looking forward to it? Is it like the highlight of your year? Yeah, 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 yeah. I honestly cannot wait. Honestly cannot wait. It's just it's the most brilliant event. You start um, by uh, by Conway Castle with a Welsh male voice. I don't know if they're doing that this year. I hope so. Oh, I hope so. A, it's a lovely way to start. I they are. It? I mean, there's no reason why they wouldn't because it's such a great thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the male voice choir kind of serenading us as we as we set off around the castle walls and then up I think it's called Conway Mountain and then and then into Snowdonia. And um, and this crib gawk on the first day, which I've done now and I was nervous about two years ago. And like I can't wait to just I love being up in the mountains. I love and that's five days of being just up in the mountains. And the only thing you've got to think about um, is you know, just yourself and finishing the race and, and getting from A to B. And it's such, that's such a treat. I mean, that's my idea of a spa day, basically. That's my idea of some me time. You know, I don't have to worry about, you know, anything. You know, a radio show, a running festival, whether I'm going to write another book, whether, you know, all of that, the other, the other stuff. You know, I've got telly then. Or no, you know, it's just... It's me and it's, it's absolute. And there's something about being in the mountains that's just good for the soul. It's like health food, but for the soul. It's wonderful. So, yeah, I cannot, I cannot wait. Listen, I, I also can't wait to kind of to test myself against 
you know, against that there Wales. Because um, Wales beat me up last time, so let's see if I can... Uh, Let's see if I can get one back to the Greeks. Yeah, yeah, definitely. With your hummus there. <laughs> definitely from, from Greece, that hummus. And, um, uh, yeah, so, so you are listening to the show. Oh, Thank yeah, you. listening to the show. Every, I don't quite wake up to get the start of the show. But, yeah, I was listening <laughs> this morning when that poor guy lost the connection when you were doing the motorway, uh, the motor racing uh, competition. Yeah. And the poor guy lost connection. I was thinking, oh, my God. But then Chris stopped the competition to get the phone in back. And I was like, oh, wow, that's great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I am listening. Um, um, so we shall rename the Dragon's Back race the Dragon's Back Spa Holiday um, in, in honour of you, Vassos. And... I, I didn't mean it like that, but I... <laughs> but, you know, like my wife would love to spend, you know, some me time in a spa, relaxing and getting massaged. I'd like to spend some me time on a mountain hurting. Yes, yeah, massaging your feet by yourself. <laughs> yeah. um, well, uh, we've just got a quick weather update coming in from Robert Mon Montgomery, who's in Wales right now, and he says there's snow on the hills in Wales at the moment, and it's very cold. So hopefully it will have warmed up a little bit in May. Um, but then the other thing that's happening right after you finish the Dragon's Back, um, you're going to then be hobbling around at a new amazing event that Virgin Radio have um, unveiled called Run Fest Run. So, um, yeah, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Oh, I'm really looking forward to this. I'm really looking forward to this. I've had this idea for ages. Um, yeah, we were talking Chris about and I it, had it on a run, yeah, weren't we? We, we yeah. first dreamt it up when we were running together. Ages ago, I know, I know. And Chris kind of had it separately, but at the same sort of time, and then we discussed it, and there's, there's been a few sort of false starts um, with this. Well, not full starts, but it was never quite the right time or the right place. But this is the right time and it's yeah. the right place. Um, we've got Big Chris involved who puts on Car Fest, and those are those are some really properly wonderful festivals. Um, you know, families and um, just like it's a big happy bubble. To be honest, it's like magic what they put on, uh, and they can do that with cars. Imagine what they could do with running, because you know, running has that intrinsic brilliance about it anyway and all the endorphins running around everyone's heads and if you just imagine the mal on london marathon sunday morning um all of these kind of that 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 massive amount of positive energy from the runners who are completing their kind of their their, their, their marathon you know their, their thing that they've been training for for months and months and months and years in some cases and and often raising lots of money for charity and these wonderful people who just come out to support just because they're wonderful people. There's, you know, there's such a great big kind of massive pot of great energy, great sort of, and it's, just, it's just a wonderful place to be. You wouldn't want to be anywhere else. If you were an alien coming down from Mars and you said to me, where should I go to see the best of humanity? It would be the Mal on London Marathon Sunday morning. And, we sort of want to bottle that a little bit. So, we, we, you know, we found Bowood House and Gardens, which is this amazing place. Honestly, it's fantastic. It's like, it's, it's just beautiful um, in Wiltshire and putting on a festival with some music. Like Ollie Murs is coming, for goodness sake. Ollie Actual Murs <laughs> is coming to play on the... Uh, on the Saturday night and reef and razor light. It's going to be some great DJs, but most of all, it's going to be about running, you know, whether you want to run or walk 1k, 5k, 10k. I think there's a half marathon and a marathon and a night run, which you and I are going to do, aren't we? Yeah. With we're head going to do torches the night run. And, a, and I'm also trying to organize a, a, um, a running club relay, maybe a 10k relay with four legs of two and a half K each um, running clubs can enter as many teams as they like of four, obviously I know that Mike Barnes runners a lot would love that. Um, so yeah, just a load of just a big old celebration of running and I'm like a, a shiny, happy couple of days and everyone going home with a great big grin on their face. And then on a Sunday, fun day, Sunday is going to be like loads of, uh, like a fancy dress run and, and Paula Radcliffe is involved and Steve Cram and they're going to be team captains. 
Um, it's just, I tell you what, it's going to be a load of fun. You're, you are coming, are you coming for the whole weekend? Yes. Well, yeah. I'm coming for the Friday and I'm hosting some of the talks in the tent. Um, and then I'm doing the night run with you. Um, but I've actually got one of my best friends is getting married on Saturday. So I absolutely can't miss that. But fortunately, it's only an hour away from the festival. So um, <laughs> you'll see me sneak off in the morning to the wedding. And then maybe I'll be back on the Sunday because it sounds really fun. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. Um, I'm really ple- pleased because we haven't we haven't really discussed it since I sort of put you in touch with uh, with Freya, who's uh, who's sorting out the nuts and bolts, and she's ace, by the way. So I'm I'm delighted. I'm thrilled. We'll see you there. Yes, yeah. I'm really delighted to be involved. It, it's just brilliant that it's actually happening. It's just like it was so long ago when you know when we first chatted about it, and then it didn't happen, and it's like sort of everyone just forgot about it, and then all of a sudden it's happening. So it's just yeah. great to get that kind of thing off the ground, and it's sort of the obvious. Um, uh, sort of um, extrapolation, as it were, from car fest, isn't it? Car fest to run fest, and you and Chris have both got really into running over the last few years. So it's just great uh-huh. to see it actually happening. Yeah, I love how Chris loves his running, um, and I love how yeah, and I love how it's happening. It's, no, it's, I, honestly, I hope it's going to be really. I think there are some tickets still available. We're trying to sort of start it a little bit smaller and just sort of grow it organically, but. Um, and no, honestly, I can't recommend it highly enough. I think it's going to be a really absolutely ace weekend that people are going to be talking about. I hope so. I hope so. That's certainly the intention. Yeah, it sounds absolutely amazing, especially with like Ollie Mers and Razorlight and Reef and all those bands. Um, yeah. It's fantastic. Um, and so, uh, so just before we go, Vassos, I've just forgotten that there's another really important question that I've got to ask you from another one of my patrons. Um, he's called Robert um, Mon- uh, Robert, and he wants to know. Um, oh no, that's the wrong one. Sorry, I've just put the wrong question up on the screen there. So um, let me see here. Robert wants to know. Rob Jordan, any tips on doing your first ultra? Um, he says, should he be scared? No, don't be scared. Honestly, if you can run, if you can run, honestly, this is absolutely true because, you know, I'm not a not a particularly good runner. I'm okay, you know, I can run a marathon in less than three hours. And that's fine. And I can run a long way. That's also fine. But I'm not, you know, I haven't got any kind of running pedigree is what I'm saying. And if you can run a marathon... If you can run a marathon in less than five hours, you can definitely run a 50-mile race. Um, but there's a lot less pressure on you in a 50-mile race. You know, you might think, I don't like the word ultra, really. Do you? It just, it just feels so exclusive to me. And I'm much, I, 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 it just feels like an only ultra-fit, ultra-kind of trained ultra-athlete to need apply. And you go to the start line of any of these races and there's all shapes and sizes on the start line there's the you know there's the there's the mountain goats at the front that will just you know eat up the terrain and look awesome whilst doing it there's people like me in the mid pack <laughs> <Holly, laughs> that's the dog Oops. that's the dog look at that she's like she knows she's in oh, trouble oh <laughs> holly <laughs> she's, she's like come on you've been chatting for too long now <laughs> She's knocked over a table. Um, so, and yeah, and there's and then and there's other people who'll be, you know, walking most of it um, and just taking in the scenery and stuff. So, I, t- to be honest, there's absolutely nothing to fear, and you don't don't feel like you need to really kind of build up to it and 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 uh, you know train too much. If you can do a marathon, you can do an ultra, and that's that's an that's an absolute fact. And you you get to you get to eat. You get to walk the uphills. You get to, you know, ultras don't tend to be, you know, along grimy city streets um, like some road marathons are. You know, I'm doing Manchester this um, this Sunday, and I'm, I can't wait. Actually, Manchester is one of the great events, the uh, the Greater Manchester Marathon. It's got a real X factor, but it's flat and it's on the streets through where people live, um, and they're they're all great about it in the northwest, and they all come out and cheer. But you'll be in the South Downs, or you'll be in the you know, um, the Black Mountains, or you'll be in the Lake District, or you'll be uh, in the Peaks or somewhere wonderful doing, or the Thames towpaths, you know, doing these ultras. And, and I don't like the word ultra, do I? Endurance runs. And you'll have a brilliant time when you're doing it. Yes, he. we can guarantee that for sure. So, Rob Jordan, if you are listening to this now or if you're listening later, don't worry about your first ultra. You're going to be absolutely fine. Um, that is fantastic. Um, and um, 
one more question from Baz Green that's just come in. Um, do you, how do you think that we can get, well, he's just saying, how do you think that we can get more, um, how, do you, how do you think trail running can get more coverage in the mainstream sports coverage? I know you were doing an amazing job, at, um, well, last year you um, interviewed loads of people like Killian Jornet, etc., uh, Jasmine Paris, um, about various things. Um, on uh, BBC Radio. So um, how do you think trail running can get more co coverage in the mainstream sports, in the mainstream sports um, coverage from Baz Green? Well, yeah, uh, well, I mean, I guess that's my fault, really. I mean, I should I should do more. I can't, I feel like, a, um, I don't want to make it about me, you know? I want to make it about this wonderful sport. And because I do it, and because I'm kind of known in the media as the bloke that runs silly distances, um, <laughs> I fear sometimes that if I go on about it too much, then I, it's, it seems like it's about me. And the wonderful thing about this sport is that it's actually very humbling. And I'm, um, I've gone black. Have I, have I, can you still see me? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, um, so I, I suppose I could get more people on, but I think I, I, I sort of probably tread a happy medium there. I think with the, you know, with the advent of films like... Um, well, like the one about the Barclay Marathons, which has just been last weekend. Um, no, we finished again. Unlucky James, unlucky Nikki. Um, and um, with the, you know, the well, the Burghouse Dragons Back Race official film from from a couple of years ago, which I which I featured in just over half of. Um, you know, I I think people will get will get to love it, and I think the more people that do it the more kind of mainstream it'll get. But do we want it to be absolutely mainstream? That's what I was thinking. I do kind of like that it's a bit fringe. I kind of like that there's not like loads of big money involved and gone all corporate and stuff like that. I kind of like that. So, mm. yeah, yeah, I'm kind of happy I, with I, where it is. Uh, but I just want loads of people to have the opportunity if they can. Yeah, I'm, I, I mean, that's why I wrote. That's why I wrote the second book, Running Up That Hill. That I, I, I wrote it just because I wanted loads of people to kind of fall in love with this amazing sport like I have and have the opportunity to maybe give it a go and realise that you kind of, you have more in you than you maybe thought you did. Um, so yes, on, in that, in that, but, 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 you know, trail running and endurance running generally is, I mean, the graph is, 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 is bonkers in recent years. Um, and young people are getting involved. There used to be that expression, didn't there? You have to be old enough to know how to suffer. Well, that's not the case anymore. You know, you have people running 50 mile races before they run their first marathons. You know, it is, I'm loving how um, accessible it is. I'm loving how many people are doing it. You know, years ago, there'd be, what, a dozen races to choose from a month in the UK, if you were lucky. Now there are dozens every weekend, um, all over the place. So I'm, I love that. I love that. And the fact that it's a little bit off the mainstream radar that, you know, you know, it's still it's still football, 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 football. I don't mind that at all. Yeah, it sort of keeps it pure, keeps it a little bit secret, doesn't it? Yeah, and the, the Barclays thing at the, at the weekend, you know, there were some people who were, um, well, when was it, four or five years ago when they made the, 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 the film, The Race That Eats Its Young, um, people were saying, oh, to goodness, no, don't make this, don't make this a media thing. Yeah. It's it, it's brilliant because it's pure. And then the the amount of social media traction that this last weekend's race got with people getting updates and people on, you know, Twitter and Instagram and all of this stuff sort of following the race. I loved it a bit less for that, I have to say. Yeah, it was good it was good to have the film, wasn't it? But since the film it's sort of gone. Uh, a bit uh, cult, hasn't it? Um, a bit like when you yeah. publicise a really good hidden gem holiday destination and then everyone goes there. <laughs> and you think, yeah. oh, damn it, why did I do that? I'm guilty of doing that a couple of times. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think trail running is growing for sure. And I think lots more people are finding out about it. And it's, it's also good to just put it on a medium like YouTube because if people are searching for trail running online, then YouTube films come up. So it's great to have you um, come on to the show and, and share all your tips about beginner ultra running and, and tell us all, all about Run Fest Run as well. So I think this is a really good opportunity for everyone to find out more about trail running. Well, it's a delight to be on. And, I, you know, the more people that do it, the better. And the more people that aren't scared of it, the better. And that's why I really, I do, I honestly do have an issue with 
ultra running as a as a as a thing because you say ultra running to everyone and they just think oh my goodness you know puts them right off and, yeah. and nobody should be off because it's so wonderful and you know nobody who discovers this sport goes ah yeah okay not for me you know you might be thinking not for me 43 miles into your first 50 mile race in fact <laughs> it'd be weird if you weren't but yeah. you know but you'll be back you'll be back and honestly it does it does so much good and it's and it transforms you were talking about it earlier transforms so many lives enriches so many lives and i, I just think a life is better but this is what we were born to do somehow we're sort of doing right by our dna when we're out there in the hills and the mountains and the beaches and just running wild running and um and and and, and a life with some wild running in it is just better than one without it whoever you are yeah, so maybe we should rename ultra running. Maybe we should call it fun running. Yeah, cool fun run. Yeah, fun running. Fun running's kind of been nicked by the sort of um, like Mary does a fun run every Sunday morning. Well, how brilliant is park run and junior park run especially? Yeah, Mary does a, fu- a five a two k junior park run. She's four every Sunday morning and absolutely loves it. So that I would guess is a fun run. Um, sometimes it's not fun. I mean, I can tell you, I've had significantly more fun in my life than I did in the last 13 miles into Sparta, which took me about four hours, maybe five. Um, but, um, you, by the way, you've, you've, you've cut off. Can you still hear me? Oh, yeah, I can hear you. I think maybe, does your screensaver keep going? So then it keeps going black. Oh, there I am again. There yeah. I am again. I think it's just uh, your screensaver um, starts in, and then it goes black for you. But we're all fine. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, may, I mean, maybe endurance running because endurance does. You know, there is plenty to endure, but it's also kind of great when you get out the other side. Yes, fantastic. Um, and so I'm gonna wrap it up now um, because I've asked everybody's questions, and Vassos has got to go to bed early tonight because obviously he has to get up at. A ridiculous hour to be on the breakfast show tomorrow morning which i'm sure everybody here now will be listening to virgin radio breakfast show give it a listen yes, from 6 yes, 30 in do, the morning we do need the listeners please thank you very much virgin yes. radio fantastic and um, so one last thing from stuart smith he says hello vassos i will see you at the dragon's back race i may bring your favorite greek food for you so <laughs> and he wants you to come on a navigation course as well with nav for adventure with him and joe um and joe has done the dragon's back an impressive a, a mightily impressive un, unprecedented four times so joe is the person to teach you about navigation for the dragon's back if you want to ditch that watch yeah. Um, well, I would love to go and do um, a navigation course with Stu, and I have been. Um, I've been at the right end of Stuart's navigation because we did on together last year. And yeah, if anyone, if anyone thinks, you know, a um, is thinking of doing a nav course, just just Google Stuart Smith because he's he's really good and he's he's quite nice. Don't tell him I said that. He's pretty funny as well, <laughs> isn't he? He's got, you know, he's yeah. got an all right sense of humour. <laughs> yeah, he, he, and he's modest and really quiet. He's so quiet. He's so quiet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, well, he's watching live, and uh, uh, I bet he's giggling just now. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, um, it, was there anything else you wanted to say to everyone um, apart from let's uh, let's all follow Vassos on Twitter, even though he probably won't he probably won't tweet anything, <laughs> and let's also um, all listen to Virgin Radio every morning from six thirty p.m. and um, uh, the other thing is, let's all go and do the night run at Bowood House for Run Fest Run. It's on May yes. the 31st, I believe. And then it's Yeah, June. May the 30th till June the 1st. Um, May it's, the honestly, 30th. it's going to be a brilliant weekend. Can't the recommend last... it highly enough. Well, you've got Claire there for a start. Yes. What more can you want? You've got Claire. Yes, it's May the 31st, Friday, May the 31st, night run, 10-ish o'clock, something like that, and then um, watch Vassos and the music all weekend. Um, that's fantastic. So everybody is saying some really nice comments to say bye to you. Uh, Running Ram says, it was great. Thank you, Claire. Thank you, Vassos. Um, Guy Greatrex says, great chat as always. Robert Montgomery saying, thanks, guys. Thumbs up. Neil Robinson saying, thanks very much to both of you. Tons of really positive comments on the chat, Vassos, um, and loads well thank you very much for having me it's been really it's been really ace 
Fantastic. And we're just getting a little um, tour of Vassos' house great, great as we finish here. Sorry, have I gone dark again? Sorry, I keep, I keep forgetting. I'm, oh, no, it's I mean, fine. <laughs> it's just we're getting a really nice tour of your house. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> yeah, some lovely artwork on the wall there and your front door. Are you off out on a run now? <laughs> no, do you know what I'm doing? I have got to go out. I've got to go. I really want to go to bed, but it's, um, oh, no. it's another parent's, uh, parents get together for my youngest daughter's school just around the corner in the pub. So I'm going to go, I'm going to, I'm going to cry off after an hour, but cause I'm really tired. Yeah. But, um, what is it? 30. Yeah. I'll get there now. And yeah. then I've got an hour. And then um, it's one of those busy days. But lovely to see you, Claire. Thank yes. you very much for inviting me on. Yeah. And I will see you. Are you coming to the to the Birdhouse Dragon's Back race? I might do. Yeah, I might be able to pop down. It would be, I, I really would like to. So, yes, I'm working on a plan. Good. Well, yes. if, I will see you there. If not, I'll see you the following weekend at Bowood House. Yes, fantastic. It's been absolutely amazing speaking to you, as always, Vassos. Good luck with the rest of your training. And I'll see you either at Dragon's Back or Bowood House for Run First Run. Thank you very much. Take care. Okay, see, see you then. Bye.